Bible at Bethel Baptist Church, at March. Bethany Baptist. At Bethany. Uh, Bethany Baptist Church, <laughs> March 18th and 19th. Dwight Easler and Kenny Wood, 6:30. Youth night Saturday, five, five to what? Seven thirty. Five to seven. Five to seven thirty. Five to seven thirty. Chili cook-off, March 20... Is it the first? Uh, 26. 26, First Baptist uh, in Gaffney. Then I got uh, the Sunshine Club is doing a fundraiser Thursday, March 21st, Pizza Inn in Hillcrest at, from 6 to 9. And, and then I got um, this Gaffney High School uh, prom bash. Prom bash. Uh, they're asking um, three to five volunteers, and it will take uh, place May third from nine a.m. to one p.m. And setup will start at eight eight a.m. and breakdown will go through uh, two p.m. And the contact uh, Deborah Phillips. Can you put on the foot? Okay. And that's all yeah. I have. If you're interested, just let me know. Or let Wendy know. She works in high school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's probably growing, aren't she? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have to. You got a prom date? No, that's a prom match. Oh, I'll be at the prom, um, prom too. That's my, that's my day that day. Well, I didn't know we changed up this year. He's still up there. That's your date up there? That's my date up there. Oh! You hear that, Jen? She got a date. That's Cody's problem. <laughs>
Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Um, let's stop one second. I do really do believe this. That effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person much comes about that. You know, it says rebel, uh, rebel is much. So if something happens. Um, I do believe that prayer works for every last one of us. Prayer works. And that's what that is saying. Verse 17. Uh, Elias, which is Elijah, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. Just stop right there. Like passions as we are. In other words, he had the same problems in life as you and I. He had the same problems. Uh, the same mental and emotional, spiritual hang-ups as you and I have. I think that sometimes we view Bible characters, especially what I would call, uh, consider the big ones. The big ones. Um, you know, like Elijah, Elijah, Moses, Daniel, David, Paul, Peter. We view them like they're larger than life. You know, like they're, they're different than everybody else. That they're in, but they're individuals, y'all. They relate the same to us. They really do. Uh, we think that they would not understand what we go through. And uh, we can't peek into their world and know where they were at. And that's not true. We can't. Uh, seems like most of us can adopt, uh, identify with people like Lot, choosing to the wrong course of going to Sodom. We can understand that. Uh, Samson winding up with his and laying his head into Delilah's lap. Uh, demons forsaking and loving the present world. But a guy like Elijah, how are we supposed to identify with that? You know, a lot of times we think about that. We're going to look at a text in 1 Kings 19 here shortly. The Bible said that Elias was a man to like passions as we are. Um, like I said, Elijah was a man that had problems, the same as we do, as you and I. But he was a man, was he a man that called down fire? Yes. Was he a man that prayed and rain stopped for three and a half years? Yes. You know, did he get swooped up with a chariot of fire and took him to the, to the glory land? Yes. Yes, he was. But he was just a man nonetheless. He was still just a man nonetheless. Uh, I want you to notice something in 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19, we're running there. Um, I want you to notice something there that, uh, that I do believe that will help you. I want you to notice this um, in 1 Kings 19 and verse number 1. And they have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. That's the prophets, prophets of Baal, y'all. Baal, Baal. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also. And if I make not thy life as the life of one of them, talking about Baal prophets, uh, by tomorrow, about this time. That he did all that, like he, like all of them died, that he would be killed as well. Um, you would think a man the caliber of Elijah, uh, when a big mouth woman like Jezebel started saying what she said about him, that he would just say, "Honey, you know who you're talking to." You know, you think he would say that? Uh, just two chapters prior to this, he boldly stood in the court in, uh, of the king of Ahab and said there will be no rain on earth until I say so. 
Um, so you would think that he would be bold and say, you know, I take you and ten more just like you are. You don't scare me one bit. But that's not where we're at right here. That's not where we're at at all. Uh, said he's a, sub, a man subject to like passions as we are. Uh, by this point, he has had a whole lot of trouble in his three and a half years of ministry. Um, verse number three. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his uh, servant there. Um, when I read that, I started thinking about that song, Can't You See? You know the song. Woman ain't going to me. But that's what that that's what that reminded me of when I when I uh, I even had looked that song up to make sure. But yeah, that's what that reminded me of when I read that verse. Can't see what that woman trying to do to me. Uh, Y'all, he's so depressed and uh, he don't want to be around anybody. Not nobody, nobody. Uh, have you ever got to that place in your life that that you just want to be just left alone? You don't want nobody mess with you. Leave me alone. The phone rings, hit the button, and say, not right now. You get a text message, so maybe I'll text you back later. You just want to be left alone. You just want to be alone. You know, just leave me alone. Not today. I just don't want to be bothered. Just leave me alone, please. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my fathers. He said, I've had enough. I've had enough. I want to preach for a few minutes on what to do when you had enough. What to do when you had enough. Um, if you haven't been in that place, you will be sometime in your life. Uh, that you say that this is enough. I've had enough. You know, I really have. I've had enough. Um, the, all this stuff piling up on me in my life, and it's just been enough. It's enough. Um, it's not always one major thing. Uh, it was not that way in Elijah's life either. Uh, there's not one thing that I can point out and say, that's the one that broke me. That's the one that said, made him say, I've had enough. Um, it's not the one that just pushed him over the edge, I guess. It's him living out in the, by the brook and, and the brook, brook drying up. Uh, the widow's, the widow's uh, woman's son dying and he had to bring him back to life. Uh, going up on Mark, Mount Carmel and having to fight all the, the backslid prophets of Baal. I don't know. If it's Jezebel saying, I'm going to kill you, what was it? It's a compound of all those things put up together that said, I've had enough. And made that great man of God say, this is enough. Enough, enough. You know, child of God, we will all get to that place that we say it's enough. And actually probably multiple times in our life, we will get there and say it's enough. Um, I imagine Elijah said, God, this ain't what I signed up for. It ain't. I thought it was going to be rainbow, puppy dog, cotton candy, and cupcakes. But this ain't it. Lord, what is this going on? Uh, Lord, it didn't turn out the way I thought it was going to. Um, some of y'all got saved, and when you got saved, the sun shined brighter. The birds sung sweeter. The flowers smelled more you know, fra fragrant. You know, just everything was just so much better. And then the devil starts throwing fiery darts at you this way and that way and hit you. And you finally say, I've had enough. I've had enough. Be careful in those times when you say that you've had enough because you could walk away from it all. We don't want you to do that at all. Um. I'm so thankful for the new cable vision we got at the houses. 
we actually have a few channels. <laughs> and um, I get to watch Andy Griffith Black and White on Saturday mornings. And Andy Griffith Black and White is some good shows. All right? I love me some Andy Griffith Black and White. Uh, so, uh, you know, I already feel this is going to be a spiritual message. It's already starting talking about Andy Griffith. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, there's this episode that they're in the jailhouse and this man and woman and are, are feuding and uh, normally Andy's so compassionate and caring and sweet and, and he finally said, that's it, I've had enough. He finds him five dollars. And Barney kind of looks at him and says, you've had enough? He said, yeah. He said, have you had enough of me? Everybody, yeah, everybody had enough of Barney. But uh, he said, you had enough of me? He said, he said in, a, in, a kind of, in a nice way, yeah. I've had enough of you too, you know. You know, he even goes out into the woods trying to be by himself. And Barney, y'all remember the episode? And Barney bought him out in the woods and messing with him, you know. And then it's like, man, sometimes we get to the place, no matter how sweet and kind we are, that we get to that place that the devil devil's been uppercutting you and uppercutting you and jabbing you and jabbing you and poking at you. Uh, at your job, at your home, your walk with God and everything, everything in your life. And you just, Lord, say, I feel like I've had enough. I can't take no more. You know, you say, what do I do in times like that? Don't throw in the towel. <clears throat> Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't quit. You say, preacher, if you sure, this is getting tough around my house and in my heart. I'm saying that it isn't. I'm not saying that it isn't, but it, the worst could be coming. It could be worse. It really could. So don't will, don't fall down, and don't say I'm done. Don't do it. Don't say I'm over it and I'm quit. I'm just I'm through with all this. I promise you that the sun is going to shine again. Things will get better down the road. Just hang in there. Just hang in there. I was reading the other day about a fighter in the late 1800s to early 1900s. His name was James Corbett. Uh, he fought this big fella by the name of Peter Jackson. Nobody wanted to fight this man. Back then they fought bare knuckle a lot of times and some other times they fought with gloves. This fight happened to be with gloves on. But anyway, you know, back in the day they, they kind of fought like this. You know what I'm talking about. They fought like this, but back in that day. But nobody wanted to fight this Peter Jackson. Y'all, they get in, the, and back then they fought. And they got in the round, in the ring, and they fought 61 rounds. 61, look it up, look it up. 61 rounds. You know, today they fight like 10, 12 rounds. I mean, when I was younger, they had 15 round fights and stuff. But uh, they fought 61 rounds. And they finally stopped it, neither one won. They stopped the fight. They said these men are too wore out. They can't defend themselves right. They can't attack each other right. They just stopped it. They just stopped it. And that's a fight. This is what James uh, Corbett said. Quote, this is his quote. He said, fight one more round. When your arms are so tired that you can hardly lift your hands to come on guard, fight one more round. When your nose is bleeding and your eyes are white and you're so tired that you wish your opponent would crack you one on the jaw and put you to sleep, fight one more round. Remember that the man who always fights one more round is never whipped. Fight one more round. Fight one more round. He said, that's how I made it through that fight and other fights. And child of God, there's going to be a time that's, that's going to be just like Elijah in 1 Kings 19, that you just want to say, I've had enough, and I'm telling you, fight one more round. Amen. What to do when you've had enough? i got three things, and we'll be done this morning. we got three things. First one is, realize you're not the only one. You're not the only one. I know we all think that we're special and there's something different about our circumstances compared to anybody else's, but you're not the only one. Uh, in fact, um, none of us are special. None of us. 
And um, there's someone who's been in your spot before, if you're inside this cave. That's where he's at. He's in a cave. He's in a cave. But somebody's been in that cave before you. Look, uh, look what Elijah thinks here in verse number 10. In verse number 10. And he said, I have been very jealous of the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken the covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I am, I even, I only am left and seek my life to take it away. He says, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Only am, and I only am left. It's only him. Verse 14. He always he like this because it's, it's worded right here again in verse 14. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because uh, uh, the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And like I said, I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Um, I'm the only one going through this wilderness. I'm the only one that's up in this cave. <laughs> that's not true. And the Bible tells us that, that that's not true. That, you know, and we can take the same thing. I'm the only one in this situation. You're not. There's other people who've been there before. It really has. Uh, and God brought uh, them through, and God will bring you through. Just trust in that. Just trust in that. But anyway, there was somebody else in the cave just one chapter prior to this, in chapter 18. In chapter 18. Chapter 18, and verse number 4. Chapter 18, 4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them bread and wine. Right there it says, be about chapter 40. So if there was people already in, in a cave before. Like you think he's the only one in the cave. And he's not. He's not the only one that's ever been in the cave. Somebody else already been there before them. Uh, verse 13. Was it not told by the Lord that what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and wine? So he said it there twice. He said, we were in a cave hiding now. We had bread and water. We survived it, you know. Elijah thinks that, that he's the only one that's been in a place like that, and he's not. He got to that place and said, I've had enough. I've had enough. It might be the first time you've ever been in that cave, but it's not the first time somebody's been in the cave. It might be the first time for you. Um, people of God, we go through caves, but we come out of them. We do. You know, you know sometimes it's, you just get in that cave, and sometimes it's a cave of discouragement, or a cage, a cave of depression, or a cave of death, or feeling like nobody knows trouble that you're going through, uh, the sickness or whatever. Um, but according to this, y'all, someone's been in that cave before, you know, and God got them out, and God's going to get Elijah out of his cave, and God will get you out of your cave as well. So I say don't throw the towel in. God brought them out, they'll bring you out. He really will. Uh, sometimes you just got to hear somebody else's testimony to help you get through your cave. Somebody else's testimony can help you get to your, your cave. I tell you what helps me out as a pastor when I get discouraged. I listen to some great men of God of yesteryear. I listen to their preaching. And I help them. And I know what they went through. They went through, they went through some stuff and they kept preaching. They kept praying. They kept walking with God. Kept living for God. Witnessing and all that. And I know that they went through troubles too. We all get discouraged in life. And there's always somebody that can help us. We just got to listen to their story. Listen to them testify. It'll help us. Uh, many times we look at our cave experience and it ain't as bad as it seems, y'all. Uh, Elijah's cave wasn't as bad as it seemed. It could always have been worse. Things can always be worse. No matter how bad things are, they can be worse. They can be worse. And that's a quote we say at Dobbs all the time. It can be worse. It can be worse. There was a Three women that died and they went to heaven. And when they got to heaven, y'all, there were ducks everywhere. 
Ducks all the place. I mean, everywhere. And they got this man a lot of ducks. And they get down there, and the Lord comes up to them and says, Hey, welcome to heaven. I just don't want to tell you something. Don't step on none of my ducks. I love my ducks. They're precious to me. They mean a lot to me. Don't step on them. Okay, Lord. Okay, Lord. So after about three days in, the first lady stepped on a duck and said, Boy, you know how duck go. Lord come walking up to him, walked up to her and said, I told you not to step on none of my ducks. Takes a, takes a, takes a change her to the ugliest man she ever seen in her life. He was uglier than a mud fence. All right. You know, by angle, 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 right? Change her up. Said, so you'll be with him for eternity. You'll be attached to him for eternity. So the other two looked at each other and said, ooh, let me not step on those ducks. So they, they was careful, you know, big dives and ducks and everything else like this. About three months in, see what? Here comes the Lord, walking up. Compared to someone even uglier. He was ugly and ugly. So they, they cuffed up together. So the third one's like, I'm not stepping on no duck. I'm not stepping on no duck. So she careful. Must go by. She'll step on no duck. And then all of a sudden, here comes God. Here comes the Lord. And he got the buffest man you ever seen. He's all ripped. He got the six pack going. He got the eight pack going. He got all puffed out. He got a good head of hair. You know what I said? He, he had a whole full of head, head, head of hair. He was all sharp, good looking. He was just, he was Captain America. All right, Captain America. And she said, Lord, I didn't step on no duck. He didn't say nothing to her. He said, cuffs, cuffs her leg, cuffs his leg. She looked at him, she looked at him and said, I don't know why we cuffed together. He looked at her and said, I don't know either. I stepped on a duck and I ended up here. <laughs> she said, I stepped on a duck and ended up here. Hey, it always could be worse. You could be the ugly one in the bunch instead of the good looking one. Y'all, y'all got the whole full load this morning. The whole full load. We saw Marshall Tucker. We talked about Andy Griffin. We talked about boxing. And I told you a joke. Praise God. You got the full package this morning, y'all. You did. <laughs> That's a full service in itself. And we got two more points. <laughs> uh, Second point is recognize you're never alone. You're never alone. Recognize that you're never alone. What do I do when I feel like I've had enough? Recognize you're not alone. You're never alone. Are you glad that even though this fellow says I've had enough and I just wish that you would just kill me? Aren't you glad the Lord doesn't dump me? The Lord doesn't know. Aren't you glad that God don't say you a good for nothing Christian? You a belly aching prophet? You the most belly aching prophet I've ever had. I'm out of this dump. The Lord don't say that. He don't do that. You know. The Lord could look at him and say, I ain't had a prophet like you. Have I ever, ever? Done the things I've done for a prophet up to this point, like I have for you. I stopped praying for you for three and a half years. I fed you with raven. Raven fed you morning and night. I fed you. I uh, raised people for, from the dead for you. I sustained you with the crews of oil and a barrel mill. I called down. For you. I've been good to you, Elijah. And you're going to do this to me? I'm glad that, that God don't do that. God don't say, I'm going to leave you alone. He don't do that. You know? Just help from the Lord, y'all, in time of trouble. Just help in time of trouble. We got to rejoice in that thought that there's help. Elijah let God down, but God didn't let Elijah down. Realize that. There are going to be times that we're in our cave and we're going to let people down. We're going to eat that pooch mouth, I guess you would say. 
and feel like God ain't fair. God ain't fair. You know, there's a Savior in heaven that never leaves us. He never forsakes us. What do you say? You make your bed in heaven, be there with you. You make your bed in hell, I'll be there. It doesn't matter where you make your bed at. God never leaves us, y'all. You know, no matter what we're going through, God is there with us. And he'll always be there with us. That's what we have to remember. You know, so you're never alone. You're never alone. Look how, God, how good God was to him. The blessing with him. He brought blessing with him. He didn't just come to be with him. He brought him blessings. Uh, I'm glad of these blessings. I'm glad the blessings that God gives us don't always determine on how good we are or what we do. Because if we did, I probably wouldn't get too many blessings. You know? But God is good to his youngest, y'all. Even the bachelor youngest. Is good to First Kings 19 5. First Kings 19 5. First Kings 19 5. And as he lay and slept on a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. You know, you don't get discouraged. Y'all do realize that God touched him. God touched him. Verse 6. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. He fed him and told him to take another nap. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. He done come and fed him twice, y'all. Y'all do realize he gave his men to food cake? Get his major food cake, you know. The Lord did two things in that passage I just read. He fed him and he had fellowship with him. There have been times in my Christian life that I wouldn't want to be around my own self. You know. I did. But the Lord still wanted to fellowship with me. No matter how bad he was. No matter how bad he was. I had somebody tell me the other day that, that they were feeling bad and uh, they were down about themselves. And I told them they needed to pray. And they prayed that the Lord come and visit them. And now these things are working out and now they got old ministries opening up in their life. They got things that's changing in their life. But the Lord was there for them, y'all. You have to realize that. We got to call on the Lord. He'll help us. He really will. He ain't going to leave us. But Elijah's gotten to a place that, not, not just that, that he feels like he's a failure. When you get to a place like that, that you're ready to go ahead and just die, you have gotten to a place that you feel like you have failed. No matter what the situation is, you feel like a complete failure to get to there. Y'all, you're not a failure. We're not failures at all. God is personal to Elijah as well. Y'all, when he was up on Mount Carmel, he felt 10 foot tall and bulletproof. When he was up there preaching against them uh, prophets of Baal. He felt like that. You know? And he what he do? He called down fire for him. Sometimes you don't need that fire to be called down. Sometimes you need something else. And like I said, God is personal. At this time, Elijah is fragile. He is fragile. Uh, chapter 19 of verse number 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Sometimes that's what we need. That's how the Lord is. He is personal to us, y'all. Sometimes we need a small, still voice to help us. You know? Like I said, on top of Mount Carmel, he needed the fire. On the bottom, when he was down in his bottoms, he needed a still, small voice. Y'all, we have 
that misconception of things. Sometimes we feel like if we're not saying a bunch of amens and shouting and having a good time, that the Lord ain't in it. That's fire. The Lord can be in that. But we just now read, we can be completely quiet in here. And God still be here and moving amongst us. Amen. It don't have to be that. Neither one is wrong. Shout the saying amen is right and a still voice is right as well. That's what we just read. You know, God still moves in different ways at different times depending on what we need on that day. You know, God gives us what we need when we need it. What we need when we need it. The third point is get ready for your next assignment. There's always another assignment. You can count on that. Verse 15. The Lord said unto him, Go, return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to king over Syria. Verse 16. And uh, Jehu, the son of Nimshah, thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, Shaphat of Abelmova, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Verse 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve with twelve, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Y'all, y'all do realize at the beginning of verse uh, chapter 19, he was ready to die. He said, I've had enough. I've had enough. Now, by the end of chapter 19, he's running around, he's anointing people. Oh, man, a lot of people. He got everybody out. He, you know, he, he's running around. He's serving the Lord, doing what the Lord told him to do. You know, that's what happened in just one chapter. He went from the bottom to the top in one chapter. You know, yo, I've been in church services like that. Come in, not feeling good for whatever reason, down in the dumps for whatever reason, not feeling good. And then the song starts, the choir starts singing. Whoever starts singing and the Lord starts touching me, he comes up, touches me, visits me, gets me lifted up, gets me going, gets me feeling good. I've had chapters of church services just like that chapter. They start out at the bottom, end up on the bottom top. You know? God is not done with you even if you were in your cave. He'll get you through your cave. Trust in him to get you through your cave. He'll get you through your cave. Like I said, he'll fellowship with you in different ways. He really will. The red part of the service is if you don't know the Lord right now, the time to come in. I can introduce you to him, but I can't say it. Only Jesus can do that. Jesus said, I am the Lord. Bring us back to the next point in time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.